So we're going to talk about Wi-Fi deauthorization attacks. And these are a, so to speak, preamble to some of the other Wi-Fi attacks that have gone out there, such as if you want to Google it, like the Wi-Fi pineapple device. What you're doing is sending a deauthorization packet that will cause Wi-Fi to drop. Now, a lot of people call these Wi-Fi jammers because they work in a similar manner, as in they deny you access to your Wi-Fi, so they're a denial of service attack uh, d directly against the Wi-Fi, but they don't do it by sending out just a massive amount of interference. That's a common way. So if we spread the spectrum with radio and RF noise and the spectrum that the Wi-Fi operates on, we would effectively cancel out the Wi-Fi. This is a more targeted, more focused, and very specific attack. Now, we all know that we should be connecting to an encrypted uh, Wi-Fi device that's using something like WPA2, which is the current standard here in 2017 uh, for most of your connections. And that means that the traffic passing between your device and the access point will be encrypted at the level so you can't be easily sniffed. Now, that being said, what's not sent encrypted, for example, the fact that you can see the name of an SSID tells you it's not encrypted. You can read the name. Also, the management packet is not encrypted. Now, that management packet is what we're specifically going to talk about the attack for. And that's what these devices do. Uh, this is a Alpha ALFA, and I'm going to throw a link in Amazon in here. Pretty neat little device and pretty handy for doing this type of attack. Now, uh, I'm showing you this as educational. I'm only going to attack my own network. Uh, it would be illegal to attack other networks, so uh, please be careful using this. But this is uh, something if you're planning out Wi-Fi, you have to think about the implementations of, and I'm going to talk a little bit of how it works and what we can do to defend against it, which is unfortunately not a lot. So. This is the Alpha device that I'm using for this. I have it connected to my desktop. Things you need is that device, Python and Linux for the description we're doing here, which is a uh, Git repository uh, by Dan McKinney, I think. I'm bad with names. Uh, anyways, I'll leave a link to all of these things I'm talking about right in the description. Now, uh, this Wi-Fi jammer is a really simple Python script. You just need to have uh, download the single script, and there's a tool that you have to load called python-scapy. So in the uh, Debian environment, it's apt-get install python-scapy. It's the only dependency uh, that this has besides Python itself. So once we have this uh, set up, we got it downloaded, I've got the alpha plugged in. Now the Wi-Fi jammer tool, as it's called, will automatically detect Wi-Fi as it's plugged in. It will work with other Wi-Fi devices. This one's just kind of handy because it's one, it's powerful, plenty of milliwatts, uh, has a great antenna. And it's actually uh, really nice to use this device, not just for this nefarious act, but also because uh, if you have trouble getting Wi-Fi somewhere and when I travel, I've, I bring that with me as I'll plug it into my laptop. Uh, the antenna is directional and has great range. So if you're uh, unlucky enough to have a hotel that did not provide you wonderful Wi-Fi uh, because it's a little too far and you didn't do enough access points, this is actually a, a great little device for that and fairly inexpensive. Anyways, so this is uh, all the descriptions of all the things that it can do. Uh, it'll, by default, out of the box, just by running it, it just attacks all the SSIDs it finds and sends out these deauthorization packets. That's uh, probably definitely illegal. All right, so let's get right into how this works. So uh, it does need to run as root, and the yes theme of my Wi-Fi network is uh, notice me senpai. So I'm going to go ahead and initiate attack against that. Like I said, if by default it will scan and attack all the networks, we definitely don't want to do that. We want to specifically attack my network, and so that's what we're going to do here. Wi-Fi jammer dash A. Now I can specify this by MAC address, so I can attack a specific access point. But if you attack an SSID, and for example, in our network here at our office, it attacks all the access points that use that SSID. So if you're doing a large scale network attack, they would probably use something like this and they attack a specific SID to knock it out. So right here's how we run the attack. And we run the root password in for sudo access. And it's gonna run a scan here. And I'm gonna switch over to my laptop as you're gonna see that my laptop was pinging right along and nicely connected, and it's uh, Wavemon is a tool that's uh, showing the connection, and after a few seconds, it's going to drop the connection. And there it goes. So now the connection's dropped, it wants a password because it's been deauthorized and kicked off of the network. This is obviously really a pain because now 
you're like, why am I disconnecting? I'm not sure. It doesn't really give me much information here, but what this is doing is running along all the channels that it finds Notice Me Senpai on and just broadcasting that back out. Now, please note, you see over here on the Wi-Fi Jammer, two SSIDs, and the reason for that is I have two of them running, so it's de-authing both of the ones it finds. And this is, it was such a simple script. You've seen how easy this was to do. I know it's very, uh, as they may term, script kitty-ish, but it's also a serious attack. If you see all these devices that so many businesses run on here, you're talking about someone who just gets within range of your parking lot and starts just blanketing your network with this, and next thing you know, nothing on your Wi-Fi is working. You have to do some sorting out on this. So let's now jump into, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, stop deauthing my network. And we're going to go jump into how do we protect against this. Now, Unify, go to settings here. Uh, this is how Unify does it. Now, other other brands do support this as well. I just happen to have Unify in the office, so I'm going to show you how they do it. Uh, they moved it to an odd spot, but they did update the uh, function in here. And you go here to wireless networks. You click the little at the top. If you've seen that, it's the... Um, Let's go back. So you go over here to the WLAN group, edit the group here, and this is where they have it turned on. And it's called PMF's Protected Management Frames. Now, may cause a performance drop. I don't have the right hardware to test protected management frames, so let's talk about a little bit of that. So the 802.11 I believe it's the W is the standard, which means encrypt those management frames. Seems like a great idea. Unfortunately, there's very low adoption rate in this. Matter of fact, even with Unify, if you click here, like the learn more, it says that PMF only applies to generation three APs. It, that's correct. A lot of access points themselves don't support it, and a lot of the devices don't support it. So right here is their first gen, second gen, and I only have some second gen devices on here. It isn't until you get to their latest third gen devices that it's supported. So they've added it to the software. And I know this is the case for a lot of devices. For example, I looked up my Nexus phone just to see if it had support for it, and it doesn't. And I was like, wow, my Nexus phone's not that old. Old in the phone years, because it's from uh, 2016, or no, I'm sorry, 2015 is when they released it. Uh, so it's old in phone years, but that's really, this is a protocol that's been around for a little while. I know it's supposed to be superseded by another one, but it's kind of fuzzy and not clear. And I think it's because, you know, we've moving everything to Wi-Fi, but no one's really uh, pushing these attacks out. Therefore, there hasn't been a big market push to really adopt this. So the protected management frames, and this is the Unify AP that supports it, it's one of the really high-end models. Uh, at 349, we just have a standard, uh, the which one, a UAP ACLR and a uh, one of the other older ones that we have that don't support this. So because they don't support this, I can't do anything about it. So it's kind of an annoyance if you do get attacked. It's something you should be aware of. It's a really tricky thing to defend against because you're not just blanket interference. You can have a very small device. I believe there's some of them that are even smaller and they may sell them as Wi-Fi jammers, but uh, they can come in a Raspberry Pi kit. They don't take a lot of uh, interference, so they're very hard to triangulate on and very hard to block this attack. It's a very tricky problem. Uh, but it's just something I want to bring you some awareness of and talk about. I've, uh, you know, knock on wood, we haven't really seen this attack against any of our clients, but it's something that I like to keep in the back of my mind in case there's a major Wi-Fi interference that we have to troubleshoot. We're like, oh man, do we have some kids sitting in a parking lot just, you know, sending deauthorization packets out there? Uh, there are some sniffing tools you can use. I believe if you do a full dump PCAP with Wireshark, you can start to understand where the broadcast is coming from, but it also requires you to get a Wi-Fi unit in full promiscuous mode. You have to see that the link level, the actual packet's being sent, but even then, you have to then try and triangulate and find this device. So even if you identified it, then you have to find it. And uh, they're so small, this can pre present a really big challenge. So uh, that's my thoughts on this and wanted to share it with you guys to show you, one, it's, it's overly simple to do. It's kind of a scary attack vector and why I don't think Wired's going away uh, for anything critical anytime soon because you got to have a backup plan, a backup plan, plug it in a wire, shut off the Wi-Fi until we sort this out. And um, so if you like the content here, like and subscribe. Uh, thanks for watching. Oh, and I'll leave links below to all the different tools I use and talked about.